A dielectric is part of a capacitor. A capacitor is two conductors with an insulator between them. That insulator is called a dielectric because it has particular behavior as part of a capacitor. You can have normal capacitors that are actual things built to be capacitors, and you can have accidental capacitors. Whenever you have two wires or two traces on a PCB that happen to be running in parallel, that's a capacitor. Anytime you've got two conductors with an insulator, that's a capacitor and the insulator is a dielectric. So before I go into the lesson, let me explain to you why this is a video I've decided to do. Up until this point, up until recently, I have thought of the attraction and repulsion caused by electric fields sort of like gravity in a radial manner. You have an electron and you have a proton, and the attraction or repulsion would be out from or into the electron or proton, depending on what's around it, and it would diminish by inverse square. But in hindsight, that's kind of silly because I know that electricity and magnetism are not actually separate. It's electromagnetism. And that's not how magnetism behaves. The lines of force for a magnet, if you ever see them drawn, actually curve around and they diminish as you go away from the magnet, but they curve around from pole to pole. It's not just between them. And as it turns out, that's true for electric fields as well. So the dielectric of a capacitor is not just between the conductors, but around them as well. Let me give you a quick demonstration. This is a capacitor. It is a large piece of wood with two pieces of copper tape, well, multiple pieces, but two copper tape lines just stuck onto the wood, and they're reasonably close to each other. There's no thickness there. The copper tape is very thin, but if you can maybe see, it's just two lines of copper tape. I actually soldered on wires onto the copper tape. I'm going to pull this off later and reuse this wood, but that's right, you can solder onto copper tape because even though my soldering iron runs at 700 degrees Fahrenheit, solder only melts at 400 and copper melts at over a thousand. So, you know, the wood is going to be damaged before the copper is going to melt. And my soldering iron probably couldn't even manage to melt the copper. So, yeah, I just soldered some wires onto the copper tape. I'm in love with copper tape and aluminum foil. So many projects. But anyway, this is a capacitor. I measured it with my oscilloscope. It's about 90 picofarads. A picofarad is very small, but like I said before, I have 68 picofarad capacitors. It's on the low end, the very low end, but it's a real capacitor size. Doing these manual capacitors is a real thing. It's not just a lark. Here's another capacitor I made, also with copper tape. This is a drinking glass. It's just two lines of copper tape on a drinking glass, and it's a capacitor. Why a drinking glass, you might ask? We'll get to that in a moment. So I have here the setup I was using to measure the capacitance of my copper tape and plank of wood capacitor. It's not plugged in though, so why am I getting this curve? It's because the two wires are next to each other in the breadboard, and the traces on the breadboard are acting as a capacitor. Isn't it messy but fun? That's right. See, as I'm touching these, I'm affecting the capacitance. And if I move one of these over somewhere else, see now it's changed? But anyway, let me go ahead and plug in the plank of wood capacitor. And so now the curve is reflecting the roughly 89 picofarad capacitor I have here. You'll see that if I touch this and I short across it, there you go, so it's plugged in. So the two conductors are the two pieces of tape and the dielectric is the air between them. But what if I use this piece of paper so I don't accidentally touch the tape? And what if I put my hand down? Check this out. So do you remember before when I had the aluminum foil and paper capacitor and I had this box and I was pushing down on the box to put it closer together so that the dielectric, the piece of paper, was narrower? That's not working now because it's just two pieces of copper tape. They're already flat. And besides, the dielectric is between. This is my hand. My hand has a different dielectric constant. It behaves differently. I'll get to what a dielectric constant is in a minute. But it behaves differently just because it's near. I'm not touching it. This is a piece of paper. I'm not touching it. If I touch it, it shorts. I'm not touching it. Without being between at all, I am affecting the capacitance. Let's have another example. Here's my drinking glass capacitor. Let me just go ahead and put some alligator clips on the side of this glass to touch the tape at the top without shorting like it's about to. There. It's about the same size. It's very small. I'm still using the one mega ohm resistor from the other video I did. If I touch, it shorts out, just like before. If I use some paper to insulate and I touch, I affect it, just like before. But hopefully now you figured out why I did a drinking glass. So I am going to pause the oscilloscope so that now 
no matter what's going on, it's just keeping the last thing it read on the screen. Here, just to be sure, let me unpause and pause again in case I wiggled it. So now it's frozen. I'm not going to move the clips, I'm not going to move the glass, I'm not moving anything. This is science. Control your variables. Literally the only thing I'm doing is I'm going to pour water in there. I'm going to pour water in this glass. The copper tape is on the outside of the glass, obviously. And of course, I'm also not pouring so much water that it reaches the clips, because it only goes to there. But now, I'm going to zoom in on the oscilloscope. Here's the top of my capacitance curve, the low-pass filter. My oscilloscope is still paused. I am now going to unpause the oscilloscope. As a reminder, I have done nothing but put water in the glass. I have not even moved the glass. When I unpause, it changed. It changed ever so slightly. And the reason it changed slightly is because this is a really crappy capacitor. But it changed. Let me go ahead and do that again. I will pour the water out of the glass. The glass is now empty. You know, it's a little wet, of course, but it's empty. So now I'm going to pause the oscilloscope. I'm going to pour the water into the drinking glass with the capacitor. Watch very, very closely as I unpause. Do you see it move? Isn't that amazing? Because that's amazing. In order to explain what in the world is going on, it's time to draw on the board. The symbol for a capacitor reminds us how it is constructed. Two conductors with insulator between. If I were to draw a bar magnet with the north and south poles, very commonly you'll see the lines of force being drawn like this around the magnet, which is how they behave. They go from one pole to the other, whereas gravity, if you have a planet, gravity is outward. And so I have made the incorrect assumption over time that electricity behaves the same way. If you have a proton and you have an electron, you're going to have what I thought were radial lines out, but they're actually going to go around like this, and this is the electric field. It's going to be just like the magnetic field because it's an electromagnetic field, and I feel very stupid. But this is a learning channel. So with that in mind, it makes more sense what's going on. You have a capacitor. It has a conductive plate. It has another conductive plate. And it has a dielectric material in between. You've got electrons on one side, protons on the other. In other words, on one side there's more electrons than protons. On the other side there's more protons than electrons. The electrons are trying to squeeze each other out and shove out because it's a voltage source. The protons are trying to squeeze away from each other as well, but that doesn't matter because they're in the atoms and they don't move, but more importantly, they're trying to pull in. So they're trying to pull in, and these are very far apart, relatively speaking. You know, it goes along the wire, and it, that didn't have much meaning on anything. But the capacitor also has the stickiness across the dielectric. This is the dielectric, and this is why a capacitor can keep its charge, and the lines of force sticking to each other are like that, and also like this. And this was the trick, why I didn't realize why this works. The further out you go from the actual plates, the less of an effect this has. But a capacitor absolutely is affected by nearby stuff. Because if you've got air here, and then you put something else like your hand, that's a different dielectric, which makes the capacitor behave differently. It changes the capacitance, which I'll explain how in a moment. But that's the trick. This effect is real, but very subtle. As you could see, the ones on my board, it was not changing very much. So you need some good circuitry, or better built capacitors, to really take advantage of it. But this is how we can do things like detect a hand near a touch button without any actual contact. Or make a liquid sensor, where there's liquid near a capacitor, but not actually touching. It's just a capacitor there, and it senses the presence of liquid wirelessly. So now the final bit of the puzzle. A little math. The capacity of a capacitor is its capacitance. You may sense a theme here. Capacitance equals charge, coulombs, essentially number of electrons, per volt. If capacitance increases, but voltage stays the same, you need more electrons for the same voltage. In other words, the charge in a capacitor is its capacitance times the voltage on the capacitor. Here is a capacitor. Extra electrons here, not enough electrons here. The electrons are trying to shove their way out, the protons are trying to suck electrons in, and there is a mutual attraction between them. The actual voltage on a capacitor is the net effect, the balance between these. The electrons are trying to shove out, but they're also trying to pull themselves essentially towards the protons over here, the positive charge, because the positive charge ain't moving. As part of the wire, the protons don't move. So it's trying to attract them, and it ends up pulling itself like you're trying to grab a wall and pull the wall off, 
but you just pull yourself towards the wall instead. So capacitance is affected in three ways. The first is the size of the conductors. If you have the same number of electrons, but you increase the physical size of the capacitor, of the, the conductors rather, then you are letting these electrons spread out. So they're not pushing against each other as hard, so they're not trying to shove out of the conductor, out of the capacitor, as hard, which means the voltage goes down for the same number of electrons. They're still holding on to each other, but they're not trying to escape as much. So you have to put extra electrons in. If you increase the capacitance by increasing the surface area, the actual volume of the capacitor, then you have to put more electrons in to get the same density, to get the same force trying to shove out. Also, the strength of the attraction, the stickiness between the plates is affected by the distance. The electric field, the electromagnetic field, diminishes based on distance like any force. So if you take the same number of electrons on these plates and move the plates further away, the attractive force between them is weaker. It can no longer counteract as much of the trying to get away force, and some electrons escape and the voltage goes down. If you put them closer together, it's easier. The, the electric field is stronger between them. They're stickier, so they can can hold to each other harder. So that overcomes more of their force of trying to get out. So you can put more electrons in because the opposite side, they're, the, the two sides are holding on to each other better. And finally, the most important thing is what is the dielectric? So we think of an electric field as just going through the air, but actually the electric field is affected by what it passes through. There's something called permittivity. Every single material, vacuum, standard air, paper, my hand, every different dielectric has a different permittivity, and this affects how strong the electric field is. So for the same distance, the same amount, the same volume, the same charge, if you change the material of the dielectric, you can change the capacitance. Because if the electric field is weakened, even if it's the same distance, the same size, if the field is weakened, they don't hold together as well, and your voltage goes down. There's a formula. There's a whole bunch of different variants of this formula based on what information you're using. But essentially, capacitance equals permittivity times area over distance. The area is the actual area of the capacitor plates, the conductor plates. So as I said, if you increase the actual plate size so that the electrons have more room, you increase the capacitance. D is the distance between the plates. There's obviously more complex formulas if you have some weird shaped capacitor, but for just the standard two plate one, if you increase or decrease the distance between the conductors, more distance, less capacitance, less distance, more capacitance. And permittivity. Permittivity is just constants you can look up on the internet, and sometimes you'll see like epsilon times epsilon zero, there's, there's different ones for which table of permittivities you're looking at, because there's absolute permittivity, literally how permissive it is, and then there's relative permittivity to some other material to make the calculation easier, but the point is, the better the material allows the electric field to go through it. The more permissive it is, the better the permittivity, the higher the permittivity, the higher the capacitance. And this is why when you have your capacitor and you have your hand, I hope that's not my hand because I might need to see a doctor. Over here, these lines, see nothing's affecting in here. This is the actual capacitor nothing ever goes in there. But you have the electric field going out like this and also through the hand. What happens is your dielectric over here is the air and a hand, and over here it's just the air. Water has better permittivity than air. Remember the drinking glass when I put water in, it increased the capacitance? Same here, the hand has some water in it. So by putting my hand nearby, some of the electric field is passing through a slightly better dielectric. It's allowing the electric field to propagate from here to here slightly better, which is slightly increasing the capacitance. If I put another hand over here, it would increase it again. That's the magic. That's the magic of having a fixed capacitor. You never touch it, you never change it. It's just what's nearby. The permittivity of the electric field that's not directly between can be detected when it changes because the capacitance changes. I had it hooked up as a low pass filter. Another common way to do it is you put it in an oscillator, which this is where all this came from. I'm trying to create touch sensors and I'm trying to work on LC tank oscillators. And one way 
that a touch sensor works is it puts it in an oscillator. The capacitance of the capacitor affects how fast it oscillates. It affects the frequency. And you can just have a circuit that counts the frequency. It says, okay, for, for this millisecond it oscillated this many times, or you could do it per second or per tenth of a second, whatever. For a certain period of time, it counts how many times it oscillates, which gives you the frequency, and then it's just got a microcontroller and it reads and reads and reads and reads, and when the hand comes near, the capacitor changes, the capacitance changes, which means it reads a different number of oscillations in that time frame, and it says, something's nearby. And you can't get an exact distance from this because everybody's got a different hand and you could have more or less water and blah, blah, blah. But the point is you can detect a change. You can have a baseline and then you could have, oh, something's nearby. And you could say, is something nearby? Yes or no. And there's your sensor. So it's really cool. Two pieces of copper tape and you can make art that's also an electric circuit. You can make your own capacitors, very small ones. If you need big ones, you're going to want to use components. But think about it. You can make you can make art that's resistors and capacitors and even inductors. I want to try to make a copper tape inductor. I want to try to make an actual piece of art that's tape and glue and paper. And it just looks like some weird little sculpture, except it's an electric circuit that blinks LEDs. Wouldn't that be the coolest thing? But that's enough rambling. Now you understand how a capacitor works. And most especially, you understand how a dielectric works. So I will be seeing you.